there's some basic things about the Velus in general that uh, people may not be aware of 100% or people may have some, some misconceptions about. Um, you know, like the Mesil uh, Yishorim famously says in his Hakdama that a lot of the things in his Sefer that he's going to say are very, really very poshit. They're very obvious, but the uh, Kefi Rov Pashtusam as obvious as they are and as simple as they are, that's how, since they're so common and so known, people tend to forget them, and so we need to be reminded. So in the general sugya, the general topic of Avelis, I think that uh, we find a similar idea, that people assume, uh, rightfully so, that the main idea of Avelis, um, uh, the main concepts behind it, is to... Here's a person, the Ovil, who's, who's suffering, who just experienced a, a, a tremendous, a significant loss, and who needs guidance, who needs to be, um, who needs comfort, which is all true. And I think that people tend to assume that most of the halachos and the, the customs and conduct of Avelis has mostly to do with helping the Ovil to cope. Now, well, that may be a very uh, important aspect, but really, our sages tell us that there's another, another central and vital aspect to the Avelis, and that is the idea of no se ba'ol im chavero. The Bali Musser explain that in general there's a very important character trait of being no se ba'ol, of helping out somebody who's in any type of tsa'ar, any type of sorrow, any type of pain, feeling their pain and helping them out. And in the time of Avelis there is someone who is, who is experiencing tremendous tsar, but it's not just the ovil, although that tsar is obviously very significant. The real tsar though is being felt as uh, we are ma'aminim, b'nei ma'aminim, people who have emuna, who believe, we know that there's the one who's experiencing the most tsar is the nifter himself, the neshama of the person who has just departed and now finds themselves in this situation. Chazal tell us that the mourner is not the only one in Avelis. The neshama itself is an ovel for itself. And that pain and that sorrow and that suffering is something that sometimes tends to be overlooked. But that neshama is now coming to grips with the fact that it can no longer perform mitzvos. It can no longer get any zuchusim merit on its own. And whatever station it's at now, that's the station it will be at, for, it will be at forever and ever. Not only that, we know in the, in the next world, that's where a person is, experiences the, the judgments, the tribulations, the recompense of the next world. And anybody, which is basically everybody, who, is not, who has imperfections, those imperfections have to be dealt with. And it's a very uh, trying, very, very hard time for the neshama itself. Avelus, the idea is to remind the mourner that really there is something that that mourner can do to help the neshama. There is an idea that the ovil should be concentrated and should be focused on the nifter and to realize and to be no say but all with the pain of the nifter and realize that there's something that actually the mourner can do to help the nifter that even though the nifter is no longer of this world, but still their existence is very, very real, and they are in, as we mentioned, a lot of pain, and even though they can't generate their own merit, but if they have a relative that they left over in this world, that relative is able to generate merit for the neshama. That relative is able through his acts, through his resources, through the mitzvot that he does, through the Torah that he learns, through the Torah that he causes to be learned, 
He can help that neshama attain comfort, attain protection, and actually to accrue more and more merit. Recently, um, we put out a sefer called the Neshama Should Have an Aliyah, a book which details the ideas and the halachos and the methods one can do to continue to provide merit for the nifter. One of the fascinating things that we found in uh, receiving feedback from this, this work is the amount of people who said that they themselves, Avelim, who were obviously in a very difficult circumstance, but the amount and the level of nechama, of comfort that they themselves took when they realized that there's something actual, something tangible that they can continue to do to help the nifter. There are many people that, who experience a loss and then they are plagued with, with very, very difficult emotions. Sometimes they feel guilty, they feel like they didn't do enough for the person while they were alive. But they can realize that right now they have the opportunity to help this person and to actually do something real for this person to provide help more so than probably they ever could have done while the person was alive. Recently, there was a, a book that came out, it uh, became very popular, translated into many languages. I believe the book is called in English, As Long As I Live. And it's about uh, a certain individual, um, Aaron Margalit, who uh, led a very difficult life. He was plagued with Yisurim throughout his life. For many years he was paralyzed, for many years he could hardly speak. But through willpower, through Amuna, he overcame so many obstacles. He was sick with the, the worst type of sickness, at least three times, I believe. And he writes a book sharing his experiences and giving chizik and comfort to people and encouraging people to have bitachon. One thing that he mentioned there, which I found very fascinating, was he spoke about his parents. His parents were Holocaust survivors. Obviously, they had gone through a lot, and they were strong people, and they were able to, after the war, even though they had lost their whole families, they were able to go to Eretz Yisrael and build up a life for themselves there. It wasn't easy going for them either, but they were able to persevere. But there was one thing that happened, he writes, and this thing, when this happened, it shattered his father completely. And that is, unfortunately, in one of the wars, in the Yom Kippur War, they lost one of their children, who was a soldier in the war and was killed in battle. And that, after all the suffering and all that they had endured, this one event completely shattered the father. And he writes there, Baron Margalit, that now his father could no longer go on. He could hardly get through a day, and now he didn't know what to do. And this went on like this for a long time until it, he was given the idea to set up a gemach, a gemilus chasodim, set up a foundation where resources were allocated to provide loans to help people, and that should be as an ilui neshama, as a merit for the neshama of, of his son who was killed. And R. Margalit writes there that once his father got involved in, his, in this project, he became instantaneously almost a new person. And it was through being able to work on something that he knew was helping his son, that he knew was providing the best type of, of, of support for his son, continuing to give him merit, to helping his neshama to have an aliyah, this knowledge gave him the strength and the fortitude to once again continue in his own life and gave great meaning to his life and is our hope that as many people as possible could take this same idea and use it to help the neshamas who, who, who so desperately need our help 
but also that they themselves, the mourners, should be able to derive a, a, a significant measure of comfort in the knowledge that they are doing something real and tangible to help their departed loved ones.